Welcome back to the channel guys, welcome to a gorgeous Snetterton and welcome to the equally gorgeous ZX-10R. In this video today I'm going to be testing this bike on track, we've got two days at Snetterton, gorgeous weather and then as a follow-up video I'm going to do a review on this bike on the road. So if you're interested in the ZX-10R, which is probably a really overlooked modern litre sports bike, then stick around, stay tuned, grab yourself a cup of tea and chopsy, roll the intro. So just completed noise testing, 92 dB on the uh, ZX-10R, and that's pretty good. That's with the Akropovic street line, you know, the performance add-on, street legal Akropovic, 92 dB. So I've got no problem with noise. We're just getting ready now. I've got to have a quick briefing. I've gone into the intercession today because um, I've actually never ridden the bike. It's the first time I'm going to ride the bike and it's going to be directly on track. So I've got into inters, sort of building the speed slowly. I don't want to be forced into going faster than I want to on a bike I don't know. So uh, we're going into this today and we'll see how we get on. I'm also going to be testing out the new uh, Foresight helmet. It's like a smart helmet with an integrated camera into the chin. So because it's all integrated, it shouldn't be a problem running that on a track there in the UK. So we're going to see how we get on with the new Foresight helmet and I'll put full details about that. It's a full carbon shell with integrated camera, sat in that navigation speakers in the helmet as well you know it's absolutely fantastic but it'll be absolutely brilliant to actually get some track helmet camera footage and it's also got a microphone in it as well so you should be able to hear me everything works out but absolutely brilliant to be able to get that on the track there in the uk so we're really looking forward to trying that out well here we are snetterton circuit um, first, first fast groups at the moment. We're going out next. This is the Foresight helmets um, camera audio. So I'd be really interested to actually get some track footage with a helmet on because in the UK you're not allowed to wear helmet cameras. You know, externally mounted helmet cameras. This is obviously all internally mounted. So the plan will be first session. Got two days here. There's no no rush to do anything. Just take it easy. Build the speed. Don't, don't crash Kawasaki's motorcycle. It's the biggest priority for these two days. I love the look of this bike. I think it looks incredible. I feel like Johnny Ray sat here. <laughs> I don't look like Johnny Ray sat here. Well, after, Johnny Ray sat here after his airbag suit goes off, maybe. The biggest thing you notice jumping on this bike is just how smooth the engine is. It is so smooth. It's like my H2 is the same. I don't know if they stick an extra balancing shaft in their straight fours compared to a lot of other manufacturers, but yeah, it's just super smooth, this engine. There's no buzzing through the bars. No buzzing at all.
Plenty of it. I just have to go down the blip of this. Oh, yeah. oh I need that. Is that me? I think the knee side is where I'm all now. That was good fun. Well, that's the first session done. Absolutely baking out there. I think we've got a predicted 45 degrees track temperature. Already first session, it's 20 past nine, that's hot work. Um, novices just going out. It's, uh, bike's amazing. It's so stable, under throttle. I mean, I've just got it in uh, sport mode, so I've not gone into any of the rider modes. I've just got it in plain old sport mode. But even first gear going on the gas, wheel comes up a little bit, but it's so stable, so planted. Brakes are good. Not masses of feel, not that sharp, but plenty of power there when you're actually pulling it. I've had no issues, you know, the ABS coming on or anything like that in the, in the first session, you'd hope not, wouldn't you? But um, yeah, it's really, really impressed so far. So I'm gonna go out, have a little tweak around with it. The gearing seems maybe a little bit high. It's quite tall gear. I think it's gonna be first gear for a lot of the tighter corners on the circuit. I'd really like to be in second. It's a little bit flat at the bottom. If it were mine, I'd probably re-gear it even further. It's quite tall geared. I think it's 100 mile, in, 100 mile an hour first gear, even now, 90, 100 in first. So, bit of first session done. Really enjoyed it. Looking forward to getting sweaty in the next one. lunch break rather than pay the overinflated prices in the cafe on site we've been to McDonald's <laughs> and they've got air conditioning because it's getting rather hot it's about 27 degrees when you're in a full set of leathers that's getting warm so um so yeah it's good I mean I, I didn't record every session but it's slowly getting faster the, the bike is very fast very stable only the only couple of little points I can point out is it's really high geared, so you've got to really drop down into first for a lot of the tight corners if you want a real, if you want to be you know real hot lap. And uh, then it makes it a bit lively, of course. So if it were mine, I, I would change the gearing slightly. Sort of the biggest things you notice with the bike is how smooth it is. You know, it's super smooth this engine. It's incredibly smooth. Which, which, which is nice, you know, so just re-gear it slightly. It's just a little bit, so they're coming out the corners, you've got to be in first, and even if you're in first, it's a little bit slow to pick up. Um, but it's so, you know, we're coming out the corners, the front lifts up a little bit, and it gets a tiny little bit of waggle may start, but it feels really stable. Re you know, really nice under power. I think it might be, maybe it's quite, I've got quite a long wheelbase, because it just feels super stable. Right, so this is first session after lunch get a little bit knackered now. See this corner, I mean on my old double R I'd do this in second. Obviously I'm warming the tyres, I'm not going flat out now, but going on the second it's like, you know, it's a little bit flat until you get to sort of 8,000. So you've got to really do that at first to wake it up, but then of course it's a little bit lively at first. And I've had to sort of short shift a little bit. Maybe the throttle is, you know, when you are running it in higher gear and you're sort of going around a corner and you've got the throttle sort of six, between six and eight thousand revs, it could be a little bit lurchy. You know, the fueling a little bit lurchy between 
I sort of rev fans. There was quite a lot of braking. Not as much as some, obviously. <laughs> then I go second in the bomb hole, but second round here, but really you need to be first because coming out of here, it's a little bit flat. A short shift it here. I'm too fat, I'm too fat and I'm fit, it's the main problem really. And then you've got a really short shift it here, because if you leave it in third. Get a little bit snatchy feeling, but on a whole, it's bloody amazing. Like on the power here, it's just incredibly stable. The first gear, and bloody fast as well, even with a 20 stone fatty on. Second to last session, whatever that's going to be. I tried to get it up into fast groups, see if I can move into fast groups to try it for a couple of sessions, but they said it's full. Can't go into fast groups. So I'm going to go out towards the back of the pack and then <laughs> have some fun moving my way up through the pack on the beast, the green beastie. Hello. <laughs> There's old Colin. The old mate Cole Cole. Their tyres warm up a little bit, their bike warm up a little bit. Before we start absolutely hammering the poor girl.
There we go, end of the day. What a brilliant couple of days. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that this actually isn't the same motorcycle I started off this weekend as. And the others who are a bit more eagle-eyed amongst you may notice this is no longer Snetterton. This is actually Bedford Autodrome. The reason for this is because, unfortunately, I did have a spill on the bike in the second to last session. No fault of the bikes, it was me getting greedy on the throttle. I span it out and uh, I crashed it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I crashed it. I felt like such an idiot for crashing someone else's motorcycle. You know, if, I wish I'd just crashed my own bike. I wish I'd brought my own bike and I'd crashed my own bike. If I crashed my own bike, I'd have been like, oh well, it's my bike, I'll fix it when I want. Because this is Kawasaki's bike, 
it's just a nightmare, you know. Um, they've been really good about it, but I just felt so bad that I've crashed their bike. I'm, I was so gutted because I was just gelling with the bike so much and absolutely loving it, you know, and just a bit too eager on the throttle and basically span it out. But the panel's gone, the exhaust's gone, clip has gone, <sighs> foot peg's gone, you know, there's even a little scuff on the tank as well, so. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be cheap to repair, and, and, and Kawasaki have been really good about it. So I can't thank you guys enough for that, you know. And I'm really sorry that, that the weekend's ended like that. But you know, on the positive, the bike was fantastic, the track was amazing. You know, I think because it, it's a two day, uh, you keep getting faster and faster, and it's sort of almost feeling like you, you don't know where the limits are until you reach the limits. And I think it's a little bit of a case of that. I've been getting quicker and quicker and quicker on track that I've almost been expecting something maybe to happen, but it's just a shame it happened when I was on someone else's bike. Oh, I should have reined it in a little bit. I feel like such an idiot. So th there we go. So I did have a little spill, but all good. Slight bruised knee, but apart from that, I'm all fine. So, uh, so there we are. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, massive thanks to Kawasaki for lending me the bike. Hopefully, if they allow, I'm going to do a road test on this machine as well. Not this exact one. Once it's had been repaired, <laughs> I'm going to do a road test on it. So I know it's a fantastic track bike. Now I just want to see what it's like as a road bike. But uh, I think it's going to be bloody good. It's such a smooth engine, so much power. You know, I, I might maybe some clip-ons if I was going to have. I'd really quite fancy one of these as a, as a project bike. Maybe I'll buy the one I crashed and then do it as my own little project machine. But anyway, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching, as always. See you in the next one, guys. Mentos. <laughs>